Hi, I'm Carla from Gold Coast Hand Therapy and today I'm going to show you how to fabricate a cake nut split. So I've got all the items here that I need and um, we use a gauge, a medical gauge wire um, and that comes in a roll like this and so you need about 35 centimetres of wire, some um, thermoplastic, I usually use the thin 1.6 thermoplastic and a cake and a jig. Um, pair of pliers and these are the straps that we make up here as well. So, all right, so I have this very pre prepared bent finger here and what we're going to use the Cagna for is to help with, um, to gain, regain extension back to the PIP joint. So first of all, you need to, halfway through the wire, you need to make a 90 degree angle and um, placing that on where the, the base of the finger at the MCP head uh, you need to then make another 90 degree angle so that that's the width that becomes the width of the finger um, or a little bit wider than the width so it doesn't bump on the finger. So once you've got those two angles right, so you then make a, so you clamp the two sides at once so that they stay even and then you make two more 80 degree turns down and that um, i'll just pick up his hand here and then that goes down in between the web space um, and then we want to um, bring the wire back run it back down along the finger and i usually um, mark around the top of the finger because by the time the plastic sits in there that brings it down more running along the sides so if you, if you push it flush and make, make a mark on where the top of the finger is so you can use um, a, a marker to do that or I often just make a mark with, um, with my nail there so you then just um, hold again, hold the two wires together and bend the wire back on itself. So we'll just place that in there. So once you've got that, um, you then mark where, her, um, where the PIP joint is and you, what you want to do is you're marking um, either dead centre or um, some people mark just at the end of the joint and that mark then sits on the outside of the, um, of the jig. So placing the wire with um, the component that you've already worked on to the top, um, you need to then start the coil. The only problem is that often the wires already have a natural bend in them so it's a good idea to just run um, the wire and um, just work it with your fingers to get it to be more level. So I'm just working that so they're not so curved. So I'll just remark that again. So just to the top there and um, placing that. So now what we're going to do is um, run the coil needs to go anti-clockwise so with the, the little um, uh, holder there we place that on the bottom and then turn the coil two turns anti-clockwise so that's one and then that's two you have to jump the wire a little bit keeping downward pressure so that the coil stays nice and tight you, uh, you take it a, a quarter or so turn more so that the, the wire then bounces back to straight. So lining up um, the bottom side of the jig now and uh, so you want that right in the middle here. This is to the bottom 
and now we're going clockwise. So placing the, the little um, turner there on the top and then we're going to round this twice, keeping downward pressure, turning it twice, that's what was one and a half, jumping that and that's twice. If we let it go there, it wouldn't be straight, so we have to take it a little bit extra turn so that it becomes straight. So that's your coil, and they should be level, um, and they should also line up with the joint, so that the side of the joint, that's where the finger, um, it's where it's going to sit on the side of the POP joint. So once you've got that, what you want to do is you want to measure to the end, to the distal phalanx, but you about the middle of that, and then you make two downward hooks in the wire, and then just cut that off. So so you just keep them level, so they need to line up. And if you hold the wire so it doesn't fling into somebody's eye. So, so that's your wire um, frame and that should uh, be level. It should be lined up with the middle of the distal phalanx and um, should sit, look like it runs down the side of the finger fairly level. So, so once you've got that, then, and they should actually be fairly consistently level, then you can um, build the plastic around it. So first of all, I'm going to just heat um, the base. So we just wait for those to heat up. But um, while they're heating, um, the strap is made up of, I use um, just a piece of non-adhesive um, hook Velcro on the pile. You put that on top. And then because a lot of people get a, um, pressure areas or discomfort where the edge of the Velcro is, I use a piece of foam to then sit underneath that um, and the finger. And then you, we sew them up so that they sit as a unit. So I'll show you how to use those. But um, that's the components that you want to sew so they just stick together like straps. So we're going to do the base first, which is the base that sits into the palm of the hand. And I'll just heat this up. So just make sure you get all the water off it. And then if you just... Um, Sandwich the wire with the plastic and then just trim around the edge there so that that actually seals all of the plastic together so it's less likely to come apart if you trim the whole piece. So you want to work out the right size for our finger, so I'll just bring that back to and um, just make sure that it's moulded to her hand, it's a little bit big so I'm going to trim this. And what you want to do here is you just double this back on itself so, so you sandwich that side together and then sandwich that side together and meaning in the middle so that you form a trough for the finger to lie in. So once you've got that um, seal, then just trim the bottom edge again so that it's um, nice and level and then I trim the end so that it's 
um, consistent with the end of the finger and then just continue to mould your finger um, so that it will fit in that. Um, so another thing trick I do is I make sure that there's uh, more pressure on the middle phalanx rather than the distal end. So I put a little uh, slight curve in the trough and another way you can check that the finger is, is right is just by um, coming in back to front um, and then making sure that you've got the right. Um, so turning the hand over then, you can just line up the finger through here. So she should feel that's on the side of the joint and it's running to nearly to the end. Um, and the pressure is more or less in through the middle phalanx where you want to take the force. So once we've got that, um, you then place your strap in through the middle part of the frame and just trimming that so that it's nice and level. So I'll just cut that in half. <coughs> Adjustment. So here we, we, to put a little bit more tension, you might just make sure that it's sitting fairly level and then we'll just feed that through the finger and then adjust the straps to fit that so, so that it's holding here in place so you can really trim that. Now, sometimes I leave a little bit extra because um, so you can take them on and off, if, particularly if they've got um, quite a deficit there. So that's keeping her nice and straight. So taking it on and off, you just pinching the splint like that and then just um, squeezing it on and that, then you don't have to continually adjust the strap. Just checking that their position in line with the joint and that means that this component here doesn't dig in to the web space so, so that's that so you would then just um, bend it to, to place the finger in and let go and bend it to take it out otherwise you have to undo these to, um, to take it on and off so we'll just try that again so bending it on getting it in place and then you should feel upward pressure. Um, the splint will sit, um, the strap will sit from the creases of the PIP and um, proximal to that. And there shouldn't be a lot of pressure on the end joint. It should. So that's a Kempener splint to improve contractures of the PIP joint. <laughs>